Simpson, of course, was then arrested and tried. The not guilty verdict was returned on October 3, 1995, to a TV audience of about 150 million people. Now compare that to the 25 million less viewers at this year's Super Bowl. Former California prosecutor Kimberly Guilfoy joins me. Kimberly, nice to see you. Um, you've uh, prosecuted cases in the you state of bet. California, including, including high-profile cases, a dog balling case, which uh, I was an analyst on and you were trying. What's the impact, you think, of cameras on the courtroom in these high-profile cases? You know, it's so interesting, uh, Greta. You did a nice job in the setup there. It's funny because I remember exactly where I was when I was watching this. I was in the last year of law school, and I ended up then going to the San Francisco DA's office and all of my law school roommates. We were all sitting around watching this. I then went from San Francisco to the Los Angeles District Attorney's Office, and I had always wanted to be a prosecutor. I ended up trying the dog mauling case, the famous second-degree implied malice uh, precedent-setting case that I co-chaired. On the criminal courts building, downtown Los Angeles, the same floor as the O.J. Simpson case, high security. And then I went on to Court TV, where, of course, we flourished with cameras in the courtroom. And whether it was, you know, uh, the Lacey Peterson case or the Michael Jackson case, um, the O.J. case, it really forever changed the trajectory of how we viewed the legal system. It was real-life law and order opening the doors to the courtroom, to witness prep, to statements, to closing arguments, to the handling of evidence, exposing the whole world to how we take care of, take into custody, and analyze forensic evidence. So it's it's quite fascinating to see what's happened here. And of course, you know, the profound disappointment, you know, as a former prosecutor and just knowing, you know, the facts and the evidence, circumstantial as well, it was very powerful, which carries the same weight as direct evidence in a court of law with a disappointing verdict in the criminal trial. But justice uh, delayed was not justice denied in the civil verdict, as you know. Well, and of course, in, in the uh, Constitution provides for a public trial. I mean, people long ago, 200 years ago, you know, the people would go down to the town square and watch them. So it's not particularly unusual. But but the thing that always struck me about this trial is this: is that we viewers saw a completely different trial than the jury. The jury was sequestered. And every time there's a battle over whether some ev evidence was admissible or not, the jury get tossed out of the room, of course, and then we'd all hear the evidence. And then maybe the judge ruled that right. it wasn't admissible. And this goes on for, for over a year. And so the, we viewers actually watched a completely different trial than what the jurors were exposed to. Well, you know, that's a fair statement. I think one of the fatal flaws in this case, because I did go on to serve under uh, Gil Garcetti, it was very interesting trying cases downtown. A lot of people were very um, just, you know, really just disabused with the whole idea of law enforcement, not trusting cases, narcotics cases, all of the above for the handling of evidence. But I'll tell you something. It's the change of venue. Um, in this case, you know, I think it was a or choice of venue, very important. They tried that downtown criminal courts building. They made a calculated decision that backfired. And you had John Q. Kelly on. He decided to try it where the case actually occurred in that forum in Santa Monica, which had a very different jury pool and produced a very different outcome, which I thought was very interesting. We talk about the, the distrust of the police. I think you've got to look sort of historically at this. That prior to this trial, you had something called the Christopher Commission, which and prior to that was because of Rodney King. I and mean, we all saw Rodney King get clobbered over the head a number of times. And so there was right. a great distrust of police in, in California. So they had this commission to talk about whether there's police abuse. So when the jury comes into the courtroom and gets instructed, the judge says, you apply your common sense. Some, some communities are common sense or cops take cats out of trees. Some some place That's your common right. sense is cops, cops, you know, roll people and stick drugs on them. So, I mean, so there are so many, so many interesting dynamics to this trial. It's, it's really true. Um, I, I just still, you know, having tried cases all over Los Angeles County, I wouldn't have picked that. They really misjudged, you know, the demographic and thinking what was going to happen there. And it was quite different in Santa Monica. People always ask me, why are you undefeated prosecutor? I said, because I pick great juries that do actually have common sense. You really have to be careful if people have predispositions. And in jury voir dire, really drill down on that to see if there's anything that's happened with them with a family member in their community that would produce 
produce inherent distrust in law enforcement. And if your case is largely based on law enforcement and police involvement, then you better make sure that you have 12 people that are going to give it a fair shake and look at the facts and the evidence, you know, honestly. And I think it was just a shame, you know, what happened. My heart goes out to the families of the victims in this case. And I just want to point something out. You know, Greta, you saw the White House today under Biden, his press secretary, you know, talk about um, O.J. Simpson honoring him, never making any mention of the victims. And by the way, say her name, Lakin Riley. Look at the juxtaposition. They never brought up this poor girl that was murdered. And you just see they're glorifying someone who committed a heinous homicide, a double homicide. And, you know, they can't even honor a young woman that was, you know, brutally murdered.